Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cafe New Canadians. Cafe New Canadians is uh, a virtual talk show which is brought to you by New Canadians TV Network. Uh, and today we are talking about uh, networking. Tap into the power of networking for professional success. And we'll be talking about how networking can help you find a job or um, uh, advance in your career. So we'll be talking to uh, our panelists. My name is Sherdil Khan, and I'm the host for tonight. Uh, so let me introduce uh, our uh, panelists tonight. Uh, first, we have Nidhi Mehra, uh, who is a public speaker and educator. And we have with us uh, Brent Edwards, professional networking advisor, and Carlos E. Pesalodon, president of hispanotech.ca. So a warm welcome to all of you. And um, how's everybody? Doing great. Thank you. Absolutely good. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. So, um, and I also welcome all our participants uh, joining us from YouTube and uh, through Zoom. And um, you can avail the opportunity to ask your questions uh, to our uh, from our panelists. So uh, let's dive into the discussion. And uh, first, we'll go with the introduction. So Nidhi, uh, first, I want you to introduce yourself and tell us a little, about, little bit about yourself and uh, how networking helped you uh, find a job or uh, connect with the various people. Hi, my name is Nithi and I work as an account manager at Walmart Connect. Apart from that, I teach part-time at George Brown College. Um, as far as networking is concerned, I have got lots of opportunities in my life through networking. So I've got lots of stories for you out there. Uh, yeah, that's, oh, <laughs> that's yes, what I want we'll to definitely, say. We'll definitely ask those stories and definitely those stories would help our uh, participants uh, or whoever is listening uh, to this uh, session. So Brent, what about you? For sure, sure, sure. Yeah, Brent Edwards, uh, professional networking advisor. I uh, work in uh, business development and has, have a background in product management, marketing, and business development for the last uh, 30 plus years. And I work in the uh, greater Toronto area. But when I moved here, uh, but 35 years ago, I knew no one in Toronto. So I've had to basically build my career from scratch. And for anyone who's in any business development role, as uh, Nitty knows, uh, networking is key to your success. So it's it's something that's very important, whether you're established Canadian or new to the country. Perfect. Uh, so Carlos, uh, tell us uh, a bit about yourself. Uh, yes, sure. Uh, Carlos Pasoldan. I'm uh, originally from uh, Peru. I came to Canada in 1980. So that's been f uh, almost uh, 42 and a half years. And uh, I'm uh, a industrial engineer, MBA from U of T. And I, I guess I, in my day job is an entrepreneur in uh, technology, the IT uh, software companies. And uh, in, in addition, I'm also the president of Hispanotech. Uh, it, it's an association that I can talk about a bit more later, and uh, also you know, participate in a number of other community uh, initiatives uh, and boards of colleges and so on. So that, that's my short version. So you have almost 42 years of experience working in Canada. So we'll start <laughs> with you, Carlos. Um, uh, tell us uh, about networking. When you were planning to come to Canada, uh, do you uh, at that time had an idea uh, what sort of networking that you would be needing uh, for uh, finding a job or connecting with Canadians? Yeah, sorry about the smile, but no, <laughs> not at all. And in in fact, the, a lot of what we're doing right now in, in organizations like Hispanotech are to cover the gaps that you know, people that, like me, particularly before the year 2000, uh, coming to Canada found uh, other than ESL, there was really not not a whole lot of uh, support for for newcomers, and it, basically I had to rebuild my network uh, on my own and uh, uh, start uh, a business. And uh, I, I sympathize with Brent's uh, comment about having to do business development and, and uh, trying to sell stuff when you don't have uh, 
all, all your friends from school and high school and, and university and all your relatives and all the acquaintances that you collect over, over the years. Uh, you know, when you're trying to start a business, or uh, you, know, you basically have to start from, from zero. If you're trying to find a job, you have to do it uh, as well pretty much on, on your own. And uh, that, that's one of the things we try to alleviate with this panel tech. Perfect. So I think uh, uh, with, uh, to talk about networking first, uh, to understand what is networking is very important. So Nidhi, um, for our audience uh, who are joining us uh, from overseas uh, or new here, um, so how can we define in networking? Sure. It's very difficult to define networking to people who are in their comfort zone. I was in India for 35 years of my life. I never had to do networking as a deliberate activity. I had that network all around me. When I was born, I was born with a network. I had my parents, I had my relatives, I had my neighbors. Then I did my schooling, my college, my jobs. So it was very easy to network with people because I was born there. But when you move to a new destination we, where you do not know anyone, you suddenly it's like a child is asking, oh, where is the Wi-Fi? Because they're born with Wi-Fi. They really don't understand. They have not seen a world without a Wi-Fi. So the similar thing applies to us. We were not born without a network. So when you have to do networking deliberately, it's very challenging. It's very hard. You do not understand how to go about it. And that's why even Canada, a country which is made out of immigrants, still we are talking about networking, 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 which in my mind should have been automated by now. But it's not because it doesn't come very easily to people. So networking is when you try and connect with another human being, either for a professional or a personal association, social interaction. That's what networking is. Well said. Uh, Brent, um, just like uh, Nidhi explained it, uh, like we do have networks uh, and we were born with the networks, but the networks that can give you um, a different sort of uh, background for your career or for your business. Uh, so what actually uh, means uh, network um, if, if we talk about can Canadian workplace or Canadian market? Sure. Yeah, so I, I would kind of define networking as the way that we build uh, business relationships in Canada. And, uh, you know, Nidin Carlos gave examples from India and Peru in terms of starting from scratch. And the example I had given was, you know, I, I grew up in Vancouver on the West Coast, went to school there, uh, moved to uh, uh, Toronto shortly after I finished uh, university, but didn't know anyone. And also, even just within Canada, uh, the way that people interact and anyone who's spent time in uh, Toronto versus Vancouver knows that, you know, even the business culture is quite different between those two places. And it's really about building relationships uh, with people that can assist you, but a lot of it is how can you assist them? So the people that tend to be most successful at networking are you know, generous givers. They're people who are uh, willing to help, assist, provide value, provide resources, connect people, um, uh, and, and be helpful to others. Uh, and those are really the people who are most successful at uh, building relationships. Um, and I guess the other thing I would add is that um, in general, most people in the business community want to be of assistance. They want to be of service. They want to help people get a leg up, get started. Uh, but a lot of cases, um, they need to know how they can help you. And I think it's being clear in terms of what you're looking for and showing that you've done your homework, you've done some investigation in terms of either the profession or the industry that you want to be part of, um, and that you have an idea of what you're looking for. And that way people are in a better position to be able to assist you. 
So like uh, you came here 35 years ago. So from <laughs> yeah, you're that reminding time... me how old I am. Yes, yeah. that's right. <laughs> yeah, I am reminding everybody like how many years that you have uh, spent here in Canada yeah. and you have almost 35 years of uh, uh, your experience connecting with various people. So mm-hmm. tell me uh, at that time and in 2023, what has changed in networking? Yeah, so I mean, definitely, of course, the, the, the technology, the ways that we can connect, the fact that we can have uh, a conversation with people across the country and around the world uh, through video chat. There, There's ways that uh, there's technology that we have. I've got a a box full of business cards I've collected over the years, but people are even now being able to just tap their phones. There, there's so many ways. There's platforms such as uh, LinkedIn that we never had back in the day. So in some ways, it's it's a lot easier to be able to connect. I mean, I, I've during the pandemic, I've been able to, uh, I even joined like a networking groups, a networking group in Scotland, uh, who I joined once a month. And there's just ways that you're able to connect with people that you never were able to connect before. But some of the fundamentals are still the same in terms of building trust, building value, being curious. Those are things that have not changed uh, despite the pass of time and the, uh, all the new technology we have available at our fingertips. Perfect. So, Carlos, uh, about technology, m- many things have changed. And um, after COVID-19, I think uh, it's more easier for people to connect through technology like Zoom um, and other platforms. So uh, what are the platforms that uh, usually you use uh, to connect with um, people from different businesses or uh, from different uh, walks of life? Yeah, primarily I would say LinkedIn is is the tool that that I personally use the most, and, and most people that I know would use. Uh, before I meet, I meet anybody, talk to anybody, whether it's a potential customer, potential supplier, potential friend, I check their LinkedIn profile. If nothing else, just to get a bit better idea of who who I'm talking to and and uh, you know get a, get get more context, I guess, uh, around the the person. So it is. Uh, the, the key tool. Okay. I'm not really into Facebook or Twitter. <laughs> and I, I have accounts on every social media, but I don't really use them. Uh, I do use WhatsApp to a large extent to connect not just with networks here, but also to reconnect and continue networking with all the friends that I had in Peru 40 years ago. And uh, you know, we organize all kinds of meets and so on. And that's really when you start to realize the network that you had and you left behind. I have like in one group, 80 people, another you know, the people from the, the rowing club is like 80 people, people from a university is close to a hundred, another group of the university, another hundred, uh, you know, all kinds of relatives and friends. And uh, all, all those are the, 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 the network, I guess, that, that in a way had to be rebuilt and, and maybe I'll, I'll just start as far as the networking. Uh, there are two additional challenges for newcomers or for people that immigrate that migrate. Uh, number one would be language in, in the case of countries that are not uh, English speaking. Uh, in Peru, of course, is is uh, English. My sorry, Spanish. Uh, my second language happens to be French, but I came to the English section of Canada. But that that makes it not just the challenge of meeting people, but also the challenge of communicating with them, uh, getting over the fear or the lack of confidence, I guess, about your accent and your vocabulary and, and so on. Uh, and the other challenge is not having the same amount of time that you have a, in school and your first job and undergrad school and so on. A, when you basically are, you, know, a, you you have all the time in the world to network with people, to go play soccer, or to talk about anything, go to a bar, and so on. Once you you migrate, you have to start paying for all kinds of things, uh, and you don't have necessarily the the support, I guess, the support network. So yes. you're building it from scratch with a, a a lot less time than when you had before. Yes, uh, and uh, Nidhi, it's time for you to tell one of your amazing stories. So <laughs> I would ask you first, uh, before coming to Canada, did you have any idea like uh, how you are going to uh, 
connect with people here in Canada or you have tried coming to before coming to Canada uh, to connect to somebody from Canada? Um, I tried to connect with people, but it was on a very superficial level. It was more of just connecting. I would say rather than connecting, I was trying to collect people. Like you go to an event and you collect visiting cards. I was yeah. doing that. I was not connecting on a deeper level. Uh, I came here, I came here, uh, didn't do that much of research. I was very excited, super excited, kind of overconfident that I will get job quickly, uh, which did not happen. And then uh, my survival instinct was kind of more dominant. So I started getting whatever coming my way. I started trying that. I worked in nonprofit. I worked in logistics. I worked in star, uh, tech startup. So I worked here, there, everywhere. Uh, but after a lot of contractual, temporary, under where I was underemployed, those kind of roles, I realized that this is not what is going to work in the long term. I am not going to thrive like this. I better get into networking. And thank God it, it was COVID because what Carlos said, I had that challenge uh, to, I did not have that much of time. I had two kids to leave the kids at home. My daughter was 11 months to leave her home and go all the way from Mississauga to Toronto just for an informational interview was just too much. It was like, it 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 felt as if it's going to be a lot of wastage of time. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so after that, when I realized uh, I put my entire mind on LinkedIn, if I would say 99% of my waking hours, I was on LinkedIn, that will not be a lie. I was hyperactive on LinkedIn. I would go, I would, and then I started connecting with people in my field and I was very vulnerable. I kept sending messages. Every day I would send 10 to 15 messages saying, hi, I came from India with a decade of experience. I'm having a hard time. Can you please give me 10 to 15 minutes of your time and help me understand how to break into Canadian ad tech space? Uh, people were very helpful. They were very kind every day. Uh, the the uh, response rate was like 20%, which is better than advertising and marketing, the field that I work <laughs> in. So uh, every day, there were two to three people who would accept my invite, get on a call with me, and then they would give me some advice. They would listen to my story in like five or 10 minutes. And then they would tell me, you know, you are looking at bigger companies. Why don't you look at smaller companies, you know, sales is going to be hard for you because you don't have relationships in the market. Why don't you try a customer service or an account management kind of role? So th these are the things that would happen. And in this, all these informational interview kind of calls that I did with people, there was one lady I connected with at Pinterest. And after meeting me, she just referred, she would just put my name on a Walmart Connect job on LinkedIn because I was always on LinkedIn, I immediately connected with the hiring manager. I sent him my, uh, I sent him a message. He shared a blurb about the job. I sent him my resume. Even before I applied online for the job on the company portal, my interview was done, uh, was fixed. So if oh. you network and connect with the hiring manager, actually applying, putting your resume on a company portal is just a formality. So that's my story. <laughs> uh, Matt, you want to add something? No, oh, just uh, congratulations. That's that's amazing. That's uh, yes. Yeah, wow. uh, that's it's that's supplement that, that working at work. That's 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 a terrific story. Yeah, amazing story. So a supplementary question from your story. Uh, uh, so how did you uh, think? Uh, like, what's basic difference between connecting and India or anywhere else in the world and networking or connecting in Canada. So what did you find? What the, what the difference did you find? Uh, we need to understand that why we all talk about networking so much. This country is made out of immigrants. There is a big population coming from outside Canada. And that's why there is a need for this much of networking. People network all over the world. They network professionally within, but nobody is chasing networking or chasing networks for survival. It's not, it's not like that. So I would not network the way I'm doing it here or 
I started doing here because it was all about survival. I want to get better opportunities. And that was not my position back in my own country. I did my schooling from a good college. And I, even before I could speak a word, my resume would tell a story and communicate my value. But that's, but when I come here and show the same resume, that value is nothing because nobody knows the name of my college. They don't know how good or bad it is. It's like I'm talking in some other language, even when I'm talking in English, so they don't understand anything. So when they don't know what college is, uh, you know, to get into that college, what kind of exams you had to, you know, clear and all that, they would discount your expertise. They would discount your how good you are or your candidature. This would happen. And it happens in interview and it comes as a shock. Oh my God, nobody knows that. Perfect. I, back in India, I worked in Star India Limited, which is a part of the Disney group. Before Disney, it was called News Corp. When I said in an interview in Canada, I, it, it, uh, I worked in a company which is part of News Corp and they were like, News Corp what? Probably it's in US, we don't know. And I was like, how do I communicate value? How do I tell them that I'm good? I have good experience. So it's hard. Uh, it's not that easy. So, yeah, Brent, so people coming to Canada, do they uh, realize like what sort of uh, skills they'll be needing for networking? Because there is a huge difference if you connect any, anywhere else in the world. And uh, when you come to Canada, there's altogether a different style of networking. So, do people usually know um, what they are going to do? So the last five years, I've, I've had a passion project uh, where I've been um, helping newcomers through workshops and one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, around their, their networking skills. And there's a, there's a wide range of expertise people have. Some people are coming from parts of the world where they they don't need to do networking because it's already established, similar to the way Nidhi had described it. Others, even from, um, you know, the common, uh, other parts of the Commonwealth uh, where English is the first language, they still, some of them also still struggle with, with Canada and the way uh, we do business. So there, there's, there's a networking component, but there's also Canadian business culture. And because of some of the subtleties, that's where I found a lot of the newcomers that I work with um, kind of get tripped up uh, because the, they'll make assumptions about, um, I guess, communication styles and, um, you know, how their their experience um, translates into the Canadian market. Um, so those are some, some areas around networking skills where even people who uh, you would think the networking style is very similar to Canada can, can still run into some barriers and obstacles. Yes. So, Carlos, uh, what uh, do you say about uh, the difference between the networking styles in different parts of the world? And do people identify uh, the gaps that uh, they want to fill uh, through networking for uh, finding a job or connecting to somebody who can um, guide that person about uh, their settlement in Canada? Mm -hmm. One, one of the things I have found with a lot of newcomers, particularly from Latin America, but it might be from other countries as well. Uh, you know, here, like I said before, LinkedIn is what we live by. If, you don't, if you're not in LinkedIn, you don't exist. But for many people that come here, they, they don't necessarily use LinkedIn that much in, in, their, in their countries. They are more into the Facebook type of thing. Uh, so for some reason, it's, it's not as popular, I guess, uh, for for this. And some people think that it's only if, when you're looking for a job that you put your LinkedIn up. In fact, it's, it's a, a lot more than, than that. It's, uh, I, I haven't looked for a job for many years, and I had my LinkedIn for pretty much from day one uh, since they started the company. So that, that is one, uh, one big difference, I guess. And I, I think it has to do with the fact that... Uh, in, in the country where you come from, you already have you know, the, the the implied network. You, you were you, know, you were born with the network, as Nishi said. said. And uh, in some in some places, you have to basically build that yourself. And the good thing about Canada is that it is 
it, it is a, it's an immigrant country, you know, it, and in, in a way, North America in, in, in general, but uh, Canada in particular, uh, there are so many immigrants, uh, you know, Toronto, I think is like 48% or something like that. Uh, but in you know, pretty much across uh, across Canada is the same the same idea. So it is something that is very much accepted and, and, and known. However, I would caution against using networking as a prospecting. I mean, when, when you're doing networking for professional purposes uh, or to build a network, you have to be careful not to come across as a you know, salesperson, I guess. Even though that might be your final objective, uh, you, know, you have to really create the relationship and maintain it uh, for for a longer time. Than not, not just connect with people when you need something or you need you, know, you need a, a reference. Uh, no, and maybe from time to time, just check your network and say hi for no for no reason at all, uh, and maybe offer you no. Know, now, if you have, a, now, if you're doing something interesting, maybe offer it to your network. Uh, tell them what you're working on. Uh, and I, I, I start some of my my, my reach out uh, connections, I guess, or, or LinkedIn uh, messages by saying, "I don't have an ask. I'm just saying hi. You know, how are, how have yeah, you that's, been?" That's pretty good advice. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so, Nidhi. Um, everybody is focused on LinkedIn. So let's dive into LinkedIn and we'll be talking about um, how LinkedIn can um, help you build that network that you want to build. So first of all, uh, is it a good idea uh, to start off with the, the ethnicity that you belong to uh, or you can go beyond that and once you land here, everything is open for you? So what do you suggest? What is a good uh, way to move forward? Sure. Uh, I think uh, I, I, I don't think you have to, you know, limit yourself to, um, you know, because I'm an Indian, I have to connect with Indians. No, because I want to connect with people who are at certain positions in the companies that I am targeting for myself. So what I did, I targeted two kinds of people. Number one, I targeted the people who are working in positions that I was looking for myself. So I was looking for account manager role. I was looking for that kind of position. So I connected with those people. When I connected, when you connect with somebody, first of all, always send a personalized note. And reason for that is you don't get a second chance to make that first impression. You know, if I don't uh, see a, a personalized invite, I really don't know what is your purpose to connect with me. Why do you want to connect with me? And second, when you connect with somebody, connect with a purpose, with a view to get the conversation going. You are connecting to make a connection. You are not collecting uh, visiting cards. So do that. I would connect with people who, who were working in those positions. And when I connected with them, this the moment they accepted, my next message would be about, uh, you know, uh, I want to understand a little bit about uh, this role. I, you know, I was working in a similar similar uh, role back in India and I want to understand it better. So idea here, here is to get information, information exchange. L just talk about the similar role in India so that they also get an insight about how this role in, in various countries and what, you know, and you also get an information how it is different than what you were doing. And then you can do a true evaluation of yourself, whether you can do that job, whether you can apply for that role, whether you understand the day in and day out, you understand the kind of tools these guys are using at this position. And uh, let me tell you, account manager role here is more technical. We are not in back in India. You just manage the business and reporting and everything is done by somebody else. Whereas here, if you are at that position, you need to know those technicalities as well. So once you get those insights, you can do your true evaluation and then you can decide whether you want to do uh, courses or you want to update yourself, you know, whatever. My second set of people are the people who have the money and the capacity to hire me. When I connect with those kind of people, the idea is to pitch. The idea is to put my best foot forward and talk about what I can bring to the table. 
So this is my idea. This is how I would go. I would pick uh, people in two different buckets and then connect with them. When you are connecting, connecting with the idea of keeping a conversation going, because that's how you will get information. That's how you will learn about this country. And then you also offer them something which Carlos said very, and it's very beautiful. You need to understand what's in it for them. Canada is made out of immigrants. People understand everybody has struggled and that's why they're open to help. But that doesn't mean that you get on a call and say, get me a job. No, that's not happening. So please, when you go there, make sure that you also offer something. Yes, yes. So yeah, Carlos, um, uh, tell me, um, you have an experience um, using LinkedIn, um, another, pla another platform. So how would you recommend how to approach um, the the people from different parts uh, of the world and who are working here, uh, or rather if uh, they are of the same ethnicity of same origin. Uh, so how to approach uh, those people? I, I would probably not make a difference uh, about how we approach uh, people based on the, on the ethnicity. I mean, un unless it's for, you know, I'm connecting for personal reasons or, or you no, know, with with friends, you know, uh, that we're and we are reconnecting. Uh, but I I would say one of the key things to understand when you come to Canada, I think it goes to your previous question as well. Uh, you, you know, your background is is great. You you have to be proud of your roots. You have to support your community and your country of origin and so on. But you're now in Canada. You're a Canadian. Like I, I personally think of myself as a Canadian that was born in Peru. I, I don't think as a you know, hyphenated Peruvian Canadian. I guess is not the. So you you have to very quickly start networking outside of your. Uh, you know, don't, don't don't get stuck networking with just people from your background because, I mean, in the case of. Uh, Latin Americans, I think, is 0.5 percent of Canada's population. So you're limiting yourself quite a bit if if you do that. It, it is good to initially, maybe not, maybe initially connect with uh, people that you can relate to more easily oh. that have been through the same experience. But don't. Uh, uh, so that that just gives you a bit of confidence that yes, there's people just like me that have made it. So you now let's go out there and. and and see what happens. But uh, I, I would also try to not de-emphasize the importance of in-person uh, networking, like networking tools like LinkedIn and so on are, are great to maybe find out about people, but uh, th there's no replacement for meeting people in person and uh, and, and actually- uh, Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely talk them. about that, uh, like virtual mm -hmm. and in-person. So mm -hmm. before that, uh, Brent, uh, I want to ask you, uh, as a professional networking advisor, uh, how do you recommend or what do you suggest? Because there's a very thin line in connecting people and sometimes annoying people. So how one can professionally approach people without annoying them uh, by sending them um, various messages or uh, without any personalized messages? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question because I, I've been asked that by uh, some of the newcomers that I've consulted with. It's kind of, you know, what cadence, when 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 is too much is enough, when is it not enough? Uh, I, I think one of the key messages is that like, the networking is not transactional. It, it is not a, I'm going to do something for you, you're going to do something for me. Um, it's really a long-term strategy. And yes, there are definitely, you know, fairly quick success stories like Nidhi's described. And that's why I was like, so, so excited by um, her, her description of how she landed um, a job in her field, you know, here in Canada. Uh, but what I would challenge, I guess, newcomers to do is there's, there's definitely a labor shortage in Canada. Like if you look across all different sec sectors, not for profits, uh, for profit mm -hmm. industries um, across Canada, there is definitely a labor shortage. Um, you want to, you know, just target the target the companies that you want to go after, 
But you also want to be open to um, looking at connecting with people where they, you may not be able to connect the dots exactly in terms of how this person is going to help me. Um, because you don't, what you don't know is you don't know, really know them. You don't know who they know. You don't know who they used to know, and you don't know what they, um, who, who they're connect with. So I would caution people to be, make assumptions around if the person's not a, you know, vice president of whatever type of organization, this person's not going to be able to help me. Um, there's a lot of, <clears throat> there's a lot of people who have connections, have relationships, and uh, to, to be open and curious in terms of who, who can assist you. There, there's an analogy I've used also just around career pathing. Um, if you if you look at uh, uh, a map of North America, you'll see basically two highway systems in Canada and the United States. In Canada, if you want to go from uh, Victoria to St. John's, in terms of the number of highways that you can take to take that route, pretty much the Trans-Canada, you could start in Prince Rupert, could end up in Halifax instead of uh, taking the ferry to Newfoundland and Labrador. But th there's a limited number of highways that will take you across the country. What I, what I really challenge newcomers to do is kind of look at their career path more like if they were going from the west coast of the United States to the east coast of the United States with the interstate system. There are so many different interstate highways where you could go from the west coast to the east coast compared to Canada. And in terms of your career path and what kind of organization you want to work for, what kind of role, there's a lot of different ways that will get you to your destination. And they may not take you in the way that you think. And that, that happened in my own career. It happens in a lot of other people's careers in Canada. So be open to other routes that will take you to a similar destination. Perfect. Nidhi, uh, a specific question. Like, for example, if somebody is traveling to Canada, yeah, you want to add something? Yes, I wanted to add something to what Brent said. He's absolutely right. Uh, you may think that you will only get success if you will continue the kind of field you were in back your home. But let me tell you a story here. Uh, so when I came here, I was pretty open and that's why I kept doing, trying different industries. Unfortunately, those industries did not work for me. So I thought maybe my, you know, my thing lies in the ad tech space. I have to get back. I have to get there. When I joined Walmart Connect, I was invited to Ad Club of Toronto. There, uh, there was a similar uh, scene. I was in, uh, part of a panel discussion where for the very first time I put out my story. I talked about the three years that I struggled and all that. Suddenly after that, a lot of students started, um, started following me on LinkedIn because I, they thought maybe I have some practical tips or something like that. At that time, one of the teachers from George Brown College reached out to me and he said, if you ever get interested in teaching, call me. And <laughs> I never taught, except my two little kids, I never taught anyone. <laughs> I was like, why would this guy even think that I can teach? So I was like, I don't know, your comment kind of, uh, I, I'm intrigued. So I would like to, I'm you know, I have always been a salesperson, so I'm always ready for a call. So I was like, let's get on a call. I got on a call and today I am teaching part-time at George Brown College. And trust me, when you are open for something that is out of your comfort zone, there is a, there is a real growth curve there. Mm. Every week, I'm putting my mind preparing presentation for every week's class. It's a lot of hard work. But at the same time, I'm developing a different skill set. And teaching pays much more than my regular job. So it's a win-win. <laughs> yeah. The story that you're telling, like it is very important to understand the importance of communication and uh, the importance of the person-to-person -person connect. Uh, for the networking. So my next question, Nidhi, from you is, uh, how do you think, uh, what's the big difference in connecting in person and on virtual coffee chats or through LinkedIn? So what do you recommend? What is the good way to start off and to move forward? Um, I 
like see i started networking with people when everything was shut so i i had no other way but to go online i tried informational one or two times one time i reached a wrong place and the other time also it didn't work for me an informational interview i don't know with my culture and coming from india i was always i took it very questionably why would somebody help a stranger why would they take out time from their busy schedule and help nidhi to get settled in her career here because it's it doesn't come easily to an indian we don't do that in india so that was very questionable that's why i could not do that with all my might but when it was shut down when i couldn't do anything in life i said let's for once give it a try with all my heart and that's what i did uh but i do feel that in person is a is a different is a different experience altogether mm. you connect with me on linkedin we are just virtually connected now we are chatting face to face i will remember you more after a few months if i meet you in person you will be part of this memory like we say a picture is a th- is worth a thousand words so there is a difference there is a personal connection there is a uh, there is that importance of physicality yes that's what i can say <laughs> rent uh, what do you suggest like in person if somebody is trying to connect somebody for uh, a informational interview at their office or at their location so in that case uh what are the tools or what are the things that you have to prepare before meeting to somebody for that connecting for that networking uh, meeting yeah so if you're, if you're meeting in person again the person's making a commitment to come and spend time with you so whether they're commuting across town in winnipeg or um you know driving down sherbrooke street in montreal or going um on barrington street in halifax like they're making a commitment to to meet with you um so you want to make sure that you're not wasting their time but you also want to make sure you're getting giving value to them so mm-hmm. you want to think about how can i assist this person and you can maybe think to yourself well i'm new to the city new to the province new to the country i i don't i don't have value i don't know how i could help well the odds are you probably worked internationally you you've you've got international connections you probably understand uh international markets more than a lot of Canadians who've spent their entire careers here so it's like what can you provide and help this person out um during that conversation so that's that's something that you're you're bringing kind of your own gift to help them you, you want to have two three questions max and it's a case of asking high impact questions that you're not going to find through uh going through their linkedin profiles like carlos has pointed out in terms of how important that is and there's a lot that you can learn about a person through their linkedin profile but it's asking the asking a couple of questions that mm-hmm. you're not going to be able to find just by looking them up um and then again what's that gift you're bringing what is there an article is there an invite that you can uh, invite them to an online or in person event um is there someone else that you you've got in mind that you can you could connect them with that might help their business those are a couple of tips i would have and i think it's better to understand uh, what their needs are like if somebody is hiring so you should know uh, what sort of skills that you are going to give them um, for that uh, specific uh, job application so carlos one point that i wanted to ask you is uh, because uh, when you network through linkedin or any other platform you have very less time very short message that you have to send them personalized a message and if you're meeting somebody on an, and to pitch the skills that you have you have very less time so how one can prepare himself or herself for that uh, short period of time to make an impact i i would say i actually see linkedin more as a research tool to find out about the people and and what they do and what might be of interest to them uh, i i wouldn't necessarily use linkedin as the as the way to or or really in any of those uh, type of tools if now if you send a short message to somebody first of all you have the risk of being annoying because if that person is of interest to me 
there is a chance that it's of interest to another 10,000 people. <laughs> and, and many people have been sending them the same type of emails looking for a job and so on. So unless you have some real reason to connect, uh, which could be because of a, a reference from another mutual acquaintance or a, an actual type of work that you're doing that might be of interest to a project that that person is working on, uh, I wouldn't necessarily try to, I guess, you know, sneak through the LinkedIn door, if you will, in, into something that should be, you know, I, I don't find it respectful to to just be, you know, chasing people that way. So I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it. Um, but one, one thing I, I wanted to add is when, you know, we, we keep talking about networking as a, almost as a way to find a job or professional activity. Um, I, I found that the best way to network with people was when you're not in the professional setting. And uh, no, the, the best uh, type of uh, networking, if you can <laughs> make it, is uh, going golfing with a, a group of people. You have you know, a couple of hours to spend, you get to see what, how they behave, what they do. If you can go camping with them, it's even better because you'll really see what, what they're made yeah. of. <laughs> and it's it, a lot of truth to that, Carlos. <laughs> yeah, and, and if it's winter camping, even better. <laughs> but it, it is uh, important, I and mean, I, I mean, it's, it's great if you can do that. But it, what, what I did uh, quite a bit of was networking through advisory boards. I would join uh, advisory boards of uh, professional associations, and there would be conferences that you go to on activities outside of the of the boardrooms where you, you know, you're going hiking or canoeing or or whatever, and and then you're really connecting with people the the way that you probably connected with your initial friends way you know, way back. So the the type of connection that you establish, and and if you do it without any asking mind without no you're just there because you know you're doing something in common then you're actually networking without knowing it it doesn't hurt <laughs> and uh, it, it will have a much longer lasting relationship and and potential for networking than mm. than just sending a message to somebody saying hey how about some <laughs> how about some jobs <laughs> yes. So, uh, Nidhi, I think uh, we should also keep in mind, uh, not only for the first job when you land in Canada, you need to network. I think uh, it's better way um, to keep on doing networking to um, get the success in your career for your professional growth um, from switching one job to the other or switching one career from the other. Uh, so you can keep on networking people, you can keep on finding people who can help you um, in the professional um, uh, professional circuit. So what do you uh, recommend? Uh, how uh, the person can uh, use that networking skills uh, to move to move move forward? Um, sure. So one thing is that you will have this larger virtual network that you have on LinkedIn, where um, you will time to time connect with people on something or the other. Like I connected with people initially to get their advice on how I can enter into, into the Canadian space. With all the people I did that call, I do find a couple of people who were like really nice, you know, very kind to me. They connected with me to job, um, you know, hunters and all that. And I really felt that I needed these people in my close network. So I made sure that I connect, keep connected, you know, keep connecting with them, you know, now every now and then find a reason. If there is nothing, then find a reason. Otherwise, if they are posting something on LinkedIn, liking it, if they got a promotion, you know, being like a cheerleader for them. Like the person who invited me to ad club was earlier, um, earlier the chairperson for only student day. Now she's the VP. So I am her cheerleader. She was the person who made this biggest change in my life. She got me this Walmart job by just putting my name there. Then she invited me to ad club because of which I got this teaching assignment. I got, I started doing content on LinkedIn and then a lot of people started following me. 
I started in I started getting invitation from colleges and nonprofit organizations to come go and speak to other newcomers. It's like now my time is there to give back whatever I have got from those people who were kind enough to give me time. Now it's my time to pay it forward. So doing that was kind of uh, is kind of important for me and yes i kind of developed that small network which where i keep connecting with them now every now and then so that's how i would suggest that people should do yeah so brent uh, a critical question in terms of uh, finding people of your network of your background uh, there are few fields uh, uh, on which people from those fields are not active on LinkedIn. So what are the other platforms or other ways to connect to those uh, people who are not active on LinkedIn or not available on LinkedIn? Sure. <clears throat> there, there, there's a numerous uh, venues, formats, forums by which you can connect with people and uh, doing it in person and doing it in a, in a, um, a scenario where it's maybe not so businesslike and uh, people maybe let down their guard a bit more. Some of the examples, you know, Carlos provided about uh, camping or doing social activities, et cetera. But conferences, trade shows, you know, the, on uh, in-person events are back. You know, we're back to the roaring 20s. So there's a lot of uh, those type of events, uh, chambers of commerce, boards of trade, uh, professional networks. So uh, New Canadians is a big promoter of uh, PINs, you know, professional um uh, networks uh, for immigrants uh there are organizations that do mentoring like the like triac there's a uh version of uh, uh like the toronto region immigrant economic council in uh, calgary i believe there's others that do mentoring uh there are a lot of people out there who want to help newcomers um uh, succeed because if newcomers succeed canadians succeed overall um so there's a lot of ways to connect um, and get involved and, and meet people. And again, some of those professional networks, so you're looking at some professions, regulated professions may not be on, um, you know, LinkedIn as much as some of the business community. And yeah. some of those professional networks are ways to uh, get involved. And Carlos had mentioned about boards, uh, volunteering. So those are some other examples. So uh, specifically, Carlos, uh, Hispanotech uh, was used to um, uh, organize some virtual uh, networking sessions. Uh, now, uh, after COVID, it's uh, in-person. So what was the experience uh, of uh, in-person and uh, on virtual? Like, how was the response of those networking events? Uh, the, the response has, uh, was very good. We were actually, after the pandemic, we have switched uh, everything to hybrid. Because during you know, before the pandemic, we were too centered on on downtown Toronto. Uh, you know, all our events were were there and so on. So it, it was hard to reach members from outside the GTA or even outside of the province. Uh, with the switch to uh, virtual events in 2020, which we we had to do within like within a week, we were in 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 virtual mode. And we started getting a lot more members from outside of the province. We have now members in nine provinces and one territory. And uh, they, they are, uh, and we, we have, of course, the, the second largest group is, uh, and Ontario is the first, and Quebec is the second largest, uh, BC, Alberta, uh, and Yukon Territory is, is the, the one territory that, that we have. We're not looking for other uh, reasons to go to Nunavut, I guess, would be, <laughs> would be great. But uh, I think with the switch to virtual, we became you know, a, a national organization. In fact, everybody became global. But <laughs> let's say our focus would be uh, is, is now national. And uh, that, that's one reason we're maintaining everything as a hybrid event. Uh, I would say still, if it was possible to do it in person, it would be preferable. However, there are so many benefits to not having to drive somewhere, park somewhere, fly somewhere. And uh, now some, sometimes you, you spend more time traveling than in, a, in the actual events. So that, that is one, one big benefit of, of uh, virtual. The downside is, is not as, uh, and it's, it's more efficient to do virtual, but it's not as effective as being in person. But it, if you have if you have no choice, if 
if you live in a, you know, three hours away from the venue, you probably wouldn't go to the event. So this this opens up the the you know, the audience to a much larger audience as well. So. So it's time to conclude. So I would ask one last piece of advice from all of you. First, uh, Nidhi, go ahead and uh, just summarize uh, and give any tips if you have uh, for the people who are uh, listening to us right now. Sure. Um, I'll talk about two things here. Uh, I know we are talking about networking and uh, with respect to networking, of course, LinkedIn is a very, very important tool. But there is one more, there is one more thing that you can utilize and leverage LinkedIn for. A uh, lot of people are already doing it, but there are, are majority of people who probably do not understand that. Uh, so think about it. A lot of immigrants who have come here with experience, they are applying for jobs without any network, and they are waiting for one opportunity of that interview where they can go and communicate their value. Hmm. Think about it that even before you get that opportunity, because you don't know when that opportunity is going to come, when you will get that interview call, you have LinkedIn where you can start communicating your value by participating and engaging with people. Be a part of group discussions. Comment on other people's posts wherever you think you have some value to add to make the discussion more healthy or move it forward so that you gradually by doing this you communicate the value you show your expertise you show the skills that you have got and the experience that you bring to the table if you start doing that people will start seeing you on linkedin you mm. keep networking of course that's important but this is another tool that can help you this is another way that you can leverage linkedin for a lot of people are doing it i am doing it so i would suggest everybody should start doing it Perfect, perfect. So, uh, Carlos? I, I would say, you know, besides the obvious things, don't forget that uh, businesses are people too. So, when when you're, you know, if you want to get into a company or whatever, that company is made of people. And those people they also have a life and they have things that they do. So, don't miss out on the opportunity to network by participating in, in the community, you know, whether you're a soccer coach or a, a hockey a parent or, 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 or you're joining a, a number of initiatives in the community, chances are you're, you'll be working, you know, if you volunteer, for example, in a community uh, setting, chances are you, you'll be working uh, on, on a committee next to the VP of a bank and you don't even know it. You, know, you, you may be uh, actually hiring people for that board uh, you know, of volunteers and in fact you're hiring somebody that owns a, a huge multinational company because they're also volunteering but when it, don't, those type of activities are kind of uh, they, they set a, a level playing field for for people and then you get to see personalities and and commitment and, and so on so it is probably a, a very good way to to connect and in, in in my case that was what I had to do basically there was no I, there was no local network there were no pins when I came uh, so you know, basically you're thrown into the pool and you start meeting all kinds of people you're a, you know, a scout leader and your soccer coach and so on and and you meet all kinds of people and and, and you practice your English too <laughs> it, it is a, a way to uh, meet people that in fact have also a, a business life so or a, a, they, they could be a, instrumental in your uh, professional life but you're meeting them in a non-challenging environment and, and uh, a more relaxed environment as well exactly so brent your uh two cents on this i've got uh two actually uh pieces of advice and uh, given my time working in financial services and banking, they're both using a financial services met metaphor. Okay, the first is to look at your professional network as your investment portfolio. Uh, when times are good or times are bad, you want a diversified portfolio of investments. It's the same with your personal network. 
you want people from different industries, different sectors, different roles, different industries. So if one sector is not doing well because of the pandemic or layoffs, et cetera, you haven't put all your eggs in one basket. So have a diversified uh, portfolio of people. The second is looking at your own personal bank account and the way in terms of making requests of others. Um, if you were to look at uh, the business relationship as a bank account, you want to make sure that you're making significant amount of deposits into the account before you're making withdrawals. So you're giving back and you're giving value before you're making a withdrawal. So the other thing to consider is, is it the ask that you're making? Is it a five cent ask? Is it easy for them to be able to do? Or are you making a $5,000 ask in terms of give me a job? So mm -hmm. that will help calibrate in terms of uh, what, your, what your requests are to the new people that you're connecting with. And I end on a personal note, and I would say like uh, networking helped me also uh, find uh, various amazing individuals from uh, uh, Canada and also uh, to find a job, uh, networking helped me also. So I would recommend uh, all of you to go through uh, the session again, if you want to, uh, you can find it in on on our YouTube and other platforms. Uh, those are the amazing uh, tips and um, insights uh, which are being shared by our amazing panelists. So thank you so much, Nidhi Mehra, for joining us. Uh, thank you, Edward, uh, Brent Edwards, and especially Carlos. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us for this session. And I would also thank all of our participants joining us from YouTube and Zoom and for their amazing contribution and for their uh, involvement in the session. Uh, if you are in Canada, you can uh, find us on Omni Television. You can watch us uh, on Omni and also uh, through our uh, website and our YouTube channel. This was uh, the session about uh, networking. And, uh, and last but not the least, you can subscribe to our weekly newsletter. Uh, which can give you all the information about our sessions on different topics that uh, help uh, newcomers or people coming to Canada. Um, a very uh, helpful uh, piece of material is available on our website and on our uh, different platforms. So thank you everybody uh, for joining us and have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.